Welcome to the virtual office hours. My name is John Fia. I chair the history department here at Messiah College. Uh, our producer, Megan Piet, is behind the camera. I have the founding fathers with me, and we are in the middle of a series on how to be a public scholar. Now, if you looked at our last couple of episodes, we talked about uh, sort of defining what a public scholar is. Last episode, we talked about writing op-ed pieces in newspapers. Uh, today, we want to talk a little bit about blogging and why scholars should blog, uh, or why it might be to their advantage to blog, and why blogging may be a good way to reach public audiences. As some of you know, uh, I write a blog called The Way of Improvement Leads Home. Uh, it's got a really awkward, um, awkward address. It's philipvickersfithian.com. Uh, this blog, and I've talked about this blog before in previous ish episodes of the Office Hours before we started this series, but this blog really started as a, a blog to promote my first book uh, called The Way of Improvement Leads Home, and it was about an 18th century farmer named Philip Vickers Fithian, thus the philipvickersfithian.com uh, address for the blog. But blogging can be a form of public engagement uh, for historians. Uh, why should you consider blogging? Well, think about blogging as a way to share your ideas, uh, your history-related ideas with larger audiences. In that sense, it's very much a form of public scholarship. Uh, think about blogging in terms of developing a platform for yourself. Uh, it seems now more and more publishers, uh, if you want to write books, publishers uh, are looking for authors or potential authors that have uh, some type of online presence, some type of online platform. Uh, so, you know, if you have a series of readers who read your blog every day or every week and so forth, that's going to attract publishers and they're going to say, hey, this person already has a built-in audience. He, can, he or she could use uh, his or her blog for promotion and these kinds of things. Um, that's what I've tried to do with my blog. My blog is sort of uh, like a, a blog slash website. I have not only my daily blog at the center of the site, uh, but if you look closely, you'll see I, I promote my books uh, on the right side of the screen. On the left side of the screen, I have information about myself, speaking engagements, and so forth. And it really gives you a, a sort of public presence that then can move beyond the blog into other forms of public scholarship in terms of speaking and writing opportunities. I think it's good to blog too because you just get in the discipline of writing daily even if it's a few sentences here and there um, it's a good it's a good habit uh, to get into. Now what is my blogging philosophy? Uh, different people have different philosophies when it comes to blogging. Some people may post whenever they feel they have something important to say. Some people may post try to post something once a week. Uh, I am a much more active blogger than that. If you read my blog carefully though, you'll notice the majority of my posts uh, are really kind of links to other posts that I kind of riff a little bit on. You know, maybe write a sentence or two uh, or three to set the, set the link into context. And then I usually offer what I call a taste uh, of the particular link so that it sort of whets your appetite a little bit and maybe you'll, you'll click and go to, and read more about that link. Um, I try to write two, three, sometimes four or five posts a day. A lot of them are just these links. Um, but that attracts an audience and, and people come back daily to see the kind of things that I'm thinking about and writing about or maybe even links that I'm, you know, by writing it on the blog, I'm endorsing uh, certain links or try to challenging you to think about certain ideas. Uh, and then, usually when I have, uh, you know, not a, when I build an audience then, when I really do have something to say on my own, you know, an original piece of some type, an original post, some longer reflections, the audience is already built in. Now, I don't expect everybody to blog uh, in this way. You know, I'm a very active blogger, um, you know, and, and do s several dozen posts a week. Um, but that's how I build an audience, and I probably, you know, I've, I've, I've been very successful in building an audience at the way of improvement leads home. So in other words, my blog is somewhat a form of sort of public scholarship, but also sort of historical journalism, where I'm, I'm kind of alerting people to things and events and trends going on uh, in uh, the world of history, in the world of politics, in the world of American religion. One final thought, you know, there's been a lot of debate about is blogging scholarship, you know, can you count a blog post on, uh, you know, as part of your resume when you go up for tenure or promotion or something, you know, it's, that's really hard to make a case for. Uh, blogging, blog posts are not peer reviewed, 
you know, you can write anything you want. No one's going to, you know, sort of stop you. There's a certain freedom in that as well. Um, you also can't really develop thoughts in any deep way uh, when you're writing blog posts. They're just more, uh, it's more a place to sort of put ideas, you know, that, that you have that maybe will germinate later or you'll develop uh, later. Blogging is much more, I think, a form of service than it is of scholarship, maybe even a more form of teaching than it is for sco of scholarship. But nevertheless, I'd encourage you to think about starting a blog or using your blog as part of your professional uh, profile and your uh, platform for communicating with the larger public. So think about blogging. Uh, let me know. Uh, email me if you have any questions about the blog or how to blog or how to set things up. Be happy to answer them. And we'll see you next time on The Office Hours.